Today on Styrene Modeler's Haven, I give up on a model, I pour myself a drink, and I ruin a paint job. I'm sort of on a rescue build kick right now, so I decided to pull out another one of my bagged and started kits out of my stash. This 72nd scale ME1099B actually never made it past the drawing board and is considered a Luft 46 build. This was a concept aircraft based off of the ME262 German jet fighter but wasn't able to get developed before the end of the war. This particular kit has already been started and has some paint on it so before I can even get to building this kit I've got to take a couple steps back. The first thing I need to do is strip all the paint off of all the parts of the model. Stripping all the paint off will allow me to get back to the bare plastic so I can almost start from the beginning. There are several different ways to strip paint off of a model without damaging the plastic. The most common method is to put the plastic parts into a bath using degreaser, oven cleaner, or even tire bleach. Since I already had a bottle of degreaser in my garage, that's the direction I took. Pouring the degreaser into a container at full strength, I submerge all the parts into that degreaser bath and allow it to sit for 24 hours. The next day I go and check and by doing a scratch test I see if some of the paint is starting to come off. I take a few of the parts under the sink and see if I can scrub it off with a toothbrush. It looks like I'm going to have to put this into the bath again for another 24 hours and see what happens the next day. Again the next day it goes under the sink and now the paint is coming off nice and clean and leaving me with bare plastic parts. I did a full detailed video on how to remove paint off of plastic parts without damaging the model. You can find the link in the description. After setting out the parts to dry for a couple days I'm ready to get started on this build. The fun thing about building an airplane like this that never actually existed is I can kind of do whatever I want and paint it any way I want. I wasn't too keen on the side turret guns towards the back of the fuselage so I decided to fill those in so I can smooth it out. Using some of the kit parts and then punching out some discs I'm able to fill this in almost to the surface of the fuselage. Later I'll go back in and fill it in with some kind of a putty or super glue mixture. Like with most aircraft model builds, I start with the cockpit. At 172nd scale, I'm not going to go crazy here. I'm just going to build it out of the box and do a basic paint job. Since I'm going to have a closed canopy, you're not going to be able to see much of this detail, so I just need to give the presence of the cockpit being in the aircraft. While waiting for the glue to dry on that cockpit, I go ahead and fill in those rear fuselage holes using some putty and super glue to try to get it as smooth as possible. The cockpit's ready for paint. Using a cockpit German gray of the era, I go ahead and spray all the relevant parts to get it ready for assembly. The kit comes with decals for the cockpit, so I go ahead and spray the instrument panel with a little bit of gloss clear in preparation for those decals. With the gloss clear dry, I can go ahead and apply those decals into the cockpit to give it a little bit of visual interest through the canopy glass. I'm not even sure how much of this I'm going to be able to see, but it's all part of the fun. Just a little bit of glue here and there, adding a few small parts. And this cockpit is good to go. Before I can button up the fuselage, along with the cockpit, I first have to install the rear wheelbase. With those glued into place, I can go ahead and glue in the cockpit and close up the fuselage. Using super glue on some of the more stubborn joints, and to me a thin, I go across all the seams and get this fuselage closed up. When I had to originally separate the fuselage at a few places like the tail, it didn't come apart as cleanly as I'd like. So with the help of a few clamps, I'm able to get it as tight as possible and apply the glue. Alright, for a started kit that I had to rip apart, the seams aren't looking too bad. I mean, some of them are pretty ugly, but I'll be able to get through those and clean them up. Continuing the assembly process of the fuselage, I go ahead and press in the front wheel bay. 
And finally, I'm able to glue that part in and complete the fuselage assembly. Whoops, almost forgot the nose cone. Let me get that on. And now I can do a little bit of cleanup of the seams by using a sanding stick and going back in with a razor saw. I can restore some of the recessed panel lines that went across the seams. I've got a full detailed video on how I like to fill seams, clean up the gaps, and make everything nice and smooth. You can find a link in the description. Being a small model, things are moving pretty quickly. I move my attention to some of the other parts, like assembling these engines, cleaning up the seams just like I did on the fuselage, and then mating everything up to the wings. I'm building my model as more of a ground assault fighter or tank buster, so I stole a couple of missile pods from another kit so I can mount those to the bottom of the fuselage. Because of the size of the model and being hard to reach at certain places, I figured it's best to go ahead and prime the fuselage and the wings separately to check the progress of my work. Well, the model is primed, so I need to go back in and check and see how things are looking. Yep. Just as I suspected, gonna have to do some more filling, sanding, cleaning, repeat, and so on to get these seams cleaned up. Another round of primer just to make sure that everything looks the way it should. If you want to learn how I like to prime my models, I have a full detailed video linked in the description. Happy with the results so far, I go ahead and start assembling the major parts of this aircraft. Let's get these wings glued into place with their iconic Jumo engines. Gotta pop on these stabilizers next. And then we pop on those missile pods to make this a ground assault fighter and tank buster. Even at 170 second scale, I always try to drill out the gun barrels just to add that little touch of realism. So after cleaning up the parts, I take my X-Acto knife to help me make a little center punch or a center hole and then with some micro drill bits, I go ahead and open up those gun barrels. I also go ahead and do the same thing to the four guns mounted under the cockpit. There's a big hole in front of the cockpit instrument panel that I think will be visible when I put the canopy on. So using a little bit of sheet styrene, I go ahead and fill this in. There's a small hole at the top of the canopy where a small gun sight periscope was supposed to stick through. For the rear gun pods. Since I've deleted those guns, I have to go ahead and fill that hole in as well. With that hole filled in, I go ahead and dip this canopy in a little bit of future to make it as crystal clear as possible. And while that canopy is set off to the side to dry, I go ahead and paint the guns since a part of them are going to be mounted inside the canopy. Like with most of my aircraft builds, I like to use Tamiya Thin Cement to apply the canopy to the fuselage. Using a little bit of capillary action, the glue will actually get underneath the canopy without creeping up the sides and glue it down. Hey, all right, this isn't looking too bad. For a bagged kit that was half started, falling apart, and half painted, this is coming together pretty well. It's time to mask the canopy. For a lot of aircraft model builders, this can be a little bit of a daunting process. There's a lot of different ways to go about masking a canopy, but I'm kind of old school and I just stick to masking tape. Using an array of metal templates, I cut different shapes into the masking tape and piece by piece, I get all the different sections of the canopy masked up. I just take my time and after a couple of sessions at the bench, it's ready for paint. To add another small detail and realism to the model, I clamp up all the tires and sand a flat spot on them to kind of depict a heavier aircraft pressing down on those tires. It's time to paint the model, but before I can apply the first color, I have to apply the gray interior color on the outside of the canopy so it will show through on the inside, mimicking the interior color of the cockpit. Had this plane been developed before the war ended, it would have been late in the war, so it wouldn't have seen a whole lot of combat. With that in mind, I'm not going to go for a heavily weathered aircraft. I'm just going to do a little bit of color variation by first applying a black base and then going back in with a white to do highlights on different panels of the aircraft. Working from lightest to darkest, 
I start with the bottom of the aircraft since it's going to be a light gray color. With the paint thinned 70% thinner to paint, I slowly apply the paint layer by layer allowing it to build up while still showing some of those highlights and shadows. The camo is a hard edge pattern. So using a pencil, the first thing I do is draw out that camo pattern across the entire model. This will give me a guideline or a reference on where the color needs to start and stop for the two different colors that I'm going to apply on this model. With everything penciled out, I can go ahead and apply the first of two colors that'll be on top of the aircraft. And just like before, thinning the paint 70% thinner to paint, layer by layer, slowly I apply the paint and I allow some of those highlights and shadows to show through. And the pencil lines are allowing me to keep that first color within the boundaries of that first camo pattern. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can even overlap the pencil line just a little bit, just so I can still see that pencil line showing through for the next step. As mentioned before, this is a hard edge camo, so I can now mask over the first color, allowing me to apply the second color against that masking tape. Using different widths of tape and a few evenings at the bench, I'm able to get this ready for the second color. Using the second color, I repeat the process with very thin paint and slowly apply that paint layer by layer, allowing some of that pre-shade to show through. All right, everything is looking good so far, so now I just need to demask this model and get it ready for decals. So far, everything is going well with the demasking process. Slowly pull away the tape and duh! Yep, it's bound to happen. Even after cleaning the model with rubbing alcohol prior to the first layers of paint, for some reason the paint just didn't stick in a couple of spots. Luckily, the affected areas were contained within one of the colors. So by sanding the edges of that damaged area to feather the paint so that it doesn't have a broken edge, I mask off the affected area and I go back in, reapply the paint, everything's good. I did get a little bit of overspray on the bottom part of the aircraft, the light gray part, so I went back in with some more of that gray and corrected the errors. To avoid more peeling paint and to help protect the paintwork, I go ahead and hit the entire model and some of the smaller parts with a clear gloss base. Back at full speed and with the clear coat dry, I can go ahead and mask off some of the secondary colors. Deviating from the instructions, I decided I wanted to paint on a fuselage band and also paint part of the tail yellow. So with that in mind, I'm back to masking. Taking another deviation away from the instructions, I also masked off the intakes on the engine so I could paint those a different color as well. With everything masked, including the wheel wells, I'm back at the paint bench. Since I'm doing a yellow fuselage band and tail and red intakes, I need to first paint white on those surfaces as the yellow and red are too translucent to paint over the green. I swap out the color in the airbrush over to yellow and I hit the fuselage band and the tail. Swapping the color again, I do the red intakes. And last we get the wheel wells. The primary colors on, I can go ahead and demask the entire model. Everything's looking just as it should and I didn't peel any paint this time. Well, it's finally ready for decals, but before I can apply the decals, I have to hit the entire model with yet another coat of the gloss clear. This gives a smooth finish for the decals to be able to stick down to without silvering. All right, let's get these decals applied. Because this model is only 172nd scale, I didn't bother with the entire decal sheet as a lot of the decals are so small and are gonna be virtually unreadable on those dark camo surfaces. I made sure to get all the major markings on, and I did do some of the smaller decals that I thought would make a difference, things like the wing walk areas. Using both a decal set and a decal solvent, everything went down nice and snuggled down tight. Well, I'm just about ready for a little bit of weathering, but before that, I have to paint inside the engines, and I have to get the missiles in the missile pods. Another shot of the clear gloss to lock everything in so I don't mess up those decals or any of the paintwork I just did. 
As mentioned before, this airplane would have been late in the war had it been developed, so I'm not going to do too much weathering. To start with a pin wash to bring out some of those recessed panel lines and other details. Nothing fancy here, just a dark brown pin wash mixed from oil paints and thinner. Making sure to apply that pin wash on both the top and bottom surfaces. And after removing the excess pin wash, all those details start to pop. You can watch a detailed video on how to do pin washes using simple oil paints. I've left a link in the description. With the pin wash done, I no longer need a glossy smooth surface, so I go ahead and coat the entire model with a matte clear coat. With everything painted, matte coated, we can now move to final assembly and a few other small weathering techniques. And one of my favorite parts, removing the masking off the canopy. If I did a good job here, I should have nice, clean, crisp edges. A little detail painting here and some over there. Since the pin wash brought out some of the details in the recesses of the wheel well, using acrylic paints, I mix up a light gray mixture and apply this using dry brushing technique on some of the smaller parts to highlight those details on the landing gear. Now the landing gear is ready to be installed into the wheel wells. A Little bit of glue here, pop this part on over there, make sure things are looking good and lined up. I'm quite impressed with this small model as there's a lot of parts to make up the landing gear and wheel wells. With everything in place, it makes for a lot of visual interest. The one last weathering technique I wanted to apply is on the tires themselves. Shaving some weathering powder from pastel chalks, I apply it onto the tires to give it the it's been down the runway look. I glue up the tires onto the landing gear, making sure that those flat spots are lined up. With everything looking the part, it's time to get this on its own legs. This was a fun, quick little build, and I enjoyed not having to look up a bunch of references and just let my imagination run wild on how I wanted this to look. It also gave me a great feeling of accomplishment taking a bagged and started model and making something out of it. And with that, my modeling friends, the Ravel 172nd Luft 46 ME 1099B. enjoyed this build and you've been able to take some tricks and techniques away that can inspire you on your next build. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video so you can be updated on my latest content. Was there a product in this build that you'd like to get your hands on? Well we can help each other out. You can find links of products down in the description and if you click those links and make a purchase I get paid a small commission at no cost to you. Thank you. Did you know I have an eBay store where I sell new and vintage model kits? Check out my ever-changing inventory of model kits and you can get 10% off by using the code YouTube10 at checkout. Be sure to watch some of my other build videos including this 48 scale Hezegawa Mert. Thanks for watching.